Now let's go guys to the corrective waves. So as the impulse is the most iconic pattern of the motif waves, the zigzag labeled ABC is the most iconic pattern of the corrective waves. Let's go through the five rules of a zigzag. So A, B, C three waves, two motive waves. So now this is a, a, pat a corrective pattern that is in my example going down. So every wave in this pattern that is going down is motive. So A and C are motive waves and B is a corrective wave, all right? Because it's correcting the smooth down. Wave A is a motive wave. So as we just saw, as you guys now know, it needs to have five waves, you know? One, two, three, four, five, because it's a motive wave. Wave B never goes above wave A. So this is a zigzag, so the trend must be you know, going lower. So of course, if B goes here and you have something like this, it's not going down anymore, all right? So then it could be another corrective pattern, but it wouldn't be a zigzag. So wave B never goes above wave A. Then wave C usually goes below wave A. So it's not always like this. You can have a zigzag that is just doing tan, tan, tan and stopping here. But usually the C wave is actually an impulse itself. So wave C is a motive wave. So it's usually an impulse. It can be an ending diagonal as well. But usually C waves uh, in a zigzag are very strong. For example, if you look at the different crises that we had, usually you have the first move down. For example, in 2007, the move down happened, I think, I'm not sure, I think in November. Then, you know, it's the market is losing like 30%. And then you have the contrarians, you know, the same people that, you know, just for no reason, they just think, oh, this is a good level to buy. Let's buy it, you know, and they all buy it together. And then you have same thing, usually the smart money that knows that, you know, this level is now too good. And then the real crisis happens because the contrarians are going to sell, the smart money is going to sell, everybody is going to sell. And usually you have in this uh, C wave, a lot of despair and you usually go until capitulation where basically you know people are just not going to believe what is happening the market is just crashing 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 and it can last for years guys in um, 1929 it lasts for more than one year so when you have one year of strong bear market you know the psychological effects on the investor are devastating and then you have some uh, psychological consequences that are just gonna usually make that people, you know, retail investors, again, the guys that bought here, for example, they're usually gonna sell here, you know, funny thing. And who is buying? As usual, guys, the institutional clients, the hedge funds, you know, those guys that, you know, know that now it's a good level and that they can hold the position if the market is losing 20 or 30% more which a retail investor that has already lost a lot here, usually almost all what they had, cannot do. So they usually capitulate at the wrong time, but I can understand, I mean, you know, after one year of uh, bear market, you are not bullish uh, anymore. You know, you don't believe that the market would one day come back, but eventually it always does. So this was the zigzag guys. So very interesting pattern. Let's go to the flat first, and then I'm gonna show you guys how those two combine together. So this is the zigzag and now we have the flat, all right? So what's the difference? So a flat, as the name uh, is saying, is flat, all right? So it's not going lower, it's a corrective pattern, but that usually develops in a horizontal channel. Same thing, so three waves, A, B, C. Wave B always retraces at least 90% of wave A. So this is the golden rule of a flat. It's that B, it's almost retracing everything. And sometimes, you know, it can a bit go above here or slightly below. The perfect flat is when it goes at the same level, but you know, it doesn't often happen like this. Usually you are just close. We are between 19 and 110. So wave C is a motive wave. So same thing, this, you know, here in my example, you know, the time is the same kind of, you know, but usually C waves, they, are, they can be, you know, like this, you know, it can just last much longer. So they are motive waves and they can go slightly below, same thing or slightly above guys. But what is very interesting to notice with this, and this is my experience, guys. Uh, I mean, I saw it in the book, but I can tell you that this is what is happening and I'm gonna show you examples of this. We have one more corrective wave that we haven't seen, which is triangle. So zigzag and flat, they usually, when you have a zigzag uh, in the second wave, you're gonna have a flat correction in the fourth wave, guys. If the second wave is a flat, 
then usually the first wave is going to be a zigzag. Once you spot that uh, the second wave is that you are in an impulse, that you have the third wave, you can recognize the third wave because it's very impulsive, and you can see that here you have the nice zigzag, then you have a very high probability that this correction pattern would be a flat. So you can use the flat characteristics that are here, that you know that here is going to be a motive wave. You have so much information. You know that once you see this, you know that you know B and C are going to be here. So you can sell here, buy here. So triangles, this is the last pattern of corrective waves. Triangles are beautiful patterns. So you can have four type of triangles. So they have five waves. It's a corrective pattern. So they labeled A, B, C, D, E. So A, B, C, D, E. And you have four type of triangles. You have contracting first. So contracting is just as we saw, for example, with the wedge pattern, you have here a convergence of the support level and the resistance level. And I like to play this kind of patterns because here, as you can see, you have this convergence. So you have a very low volatility at these levels. And low volatility means that it's easy to, for example, you put your buying signal here and your stop loss just below. And usually the market is behaving quite well in this area. So it's easy to set up some trades. And once you spot A, B, C, D, you're going to start buying here. You know, you don't buy here, all right? You don't buy uh, after the breakout. If you want to play uh, a breakout, you actually buy below and you stop loss just here. So for example, in this situation, the distance is too large and the volatility is extreme. So it's not easy to play this kind of reversal uh, moves on the expanding triangle. So expanding is same thing, A, B, C, D, E, but as you can see, it's a megaphon pattern. This is a bit what we're having on the S&P 500 right now. Uh, this is COVID crisis. I think we're here, guys. I think we're here. So this was all-time highs. So we are above the all-time highs. We are actually even doing something like this, guys. You can go and check it out. We broke this resistance level and we are now doing something like this. So let's see, let's analyze it like uh, step by step when it arrives. But it looks to me that we are in an expanding triangle and that we broke on the upside. So maybe we're going to do the fifth wave. So you have ascending or descending. They are basically symmetrical patterns that have like a horizontal basis. So for the ascending triangle, the horizontal basis is the resistance level that is here. And for the descending triangle, you have the horizontal basis that is the support level. So you have same thing, A, B, C, D, E, A, B, C, D, E. And here, exactly as for the contracting triangle, you have this uh, very nice area, guys, to set up your trades because the volatility is usually low. For example, for descending triangles, for those who have watched my video on the Bitcoin, we had a beautiful descending triangle, you know, between uh, 35,000 and 30,000, you know, here I think 40,000 and here like 30,000. And then we saw here the breakout and it was easy to play. And, uh, you know, I used this pattern to enter some nice trades on the Bitcoin. So guys, I'm done for uh, the theory. So I repeat, we have five patterns. So you have the impulse, diagonal, zigzag, flat and triangle. All right. So the impulse is the most iconic one. And triangles are usually, guys, to finish on this, are usually uh, false waves. I rarely see a triangle in a second wave. So once you spot a triangle, it's same thing as when you spot an ending diagonal. You know that probably you're going to have an ending diagonal happening. So for example, on the Bitcoin, uh, I think we are having maybe the last uh, wave of the impulse that started at 10,000 and that is going to 55 or 60,000, let's see, because I saw that we have a nice triangle on the first wave. 